Hi there, this is Corey Jensen from the Utah State Historic Preservation Office. Here today to share another segment of Utah's historic architecture. And today we're gonna to talk about the single cell house. And in the last segment, we discussed the most primitive type of housing in Utah, that is the dugout. Now we're going to move on to above ground buildings and discuss the most common types of early Utah residences, beginning with this one, the single cell. Uh, the simplest and one of the earliest types of housing in Utah is the single cell, and it is, it is what its name implies, a single room residence. Next to the dugout, the single cell or single pen, as it is more commonly known throughout the country, um, or cabin, was the most basic dwelling form in Utah. The reason for this designation is obvious. There is only one single room in the whole house. Uh, imagine that by our standards of dwelling today, uh, with multiple rooms, multiple floors in our houses, and trying to live in something like this. It's almost unimaginable in our day and age. Um, also known as the hall house, the hall being an English term for a room where most of the major activities of the house occurred during the day. Um, the single cell was a fairly common house type in America and traces its roots back several centuries to England, especially in working class areas of the country. The single cell plan was implemented in many ways, um, especially in early log cabins throughout the country. And those cabins were not actually built like this, but I thought I'd add some uh, comic relief to, to this presentation. Um, usually they were more rectangular in plan, but as one would ex be expected, most examples survived are made of brick or stone. The wood ones would deteriorate over time. However, I will show you some several examples actually of of log cabins in Utah. Um, and these would typically have a plan that was more square uh, than rectangular, that is in the stone and the brick examples. But examples of single cells can still be found just about anywhere in the state, but in greater numbers in the central and southern portions that have been less impacted by um, heavier development pressure. Uh, according to the Utah State Historic Preservation Database, there are more than a thousand single cell houses found throughout Utah uh, in various states of repair. Uh, single cell houses ranged anywhere from one to one and a half stories. And because space was tight within, exterior staircases were commonly constructed to access that upper story. Um, although interior staircases are not uncommon either. Uh, commonly a rear lean-to was constructed to house a kitchen and slightly increase the living space. Uh, the fenestration pattern or the door and window openings on the primary facade might consist of a two bay, that is a door and a window opening, or less commonly in a three bay. And that could either be in a door window window layout or a window door window layout moving from left to right. But I'll show some examples of these to you in a minute here. And they often these three bay layouts have the appearance of a narrow hall parlor house. And we'll talk about hall parlor houses uh, in a couple of episodes from now. Um, but we'll see examples of all of these here in a minute. Uh, the size of the house justified its original intent as a temporary residence just because of the size uh, and meeting the increase in family members. Uh, you can only fit so many people into a little uh, one room house as we found out when we discussed the dugout. But rather than rebuilding or re relocating, many single cell owners just chose to add to the structure in the form of either a rear lean-to or a cross wing, or maybe extend out to the side to make it a double cell house. And we'll talk about those actually next time. Um, <clears throat> although the single cell house was one of the earliest types in the state, construction of these kinds of houses um, fell well within the 20th century, up in the 1920s even. So we're going to look at a couple of examples, or actually more than a couple, um, several examples. So here are a couple of log houses, which I said were not that common in Utah, but these survived. And the top uh, building in this slide is the William Hawk cabin in Salt Lake City. This was originally built in the uh, Pioneer Fort where Pioneer Park is now in Salt Lake. So it is one of the earliest standing residences still um, in the state. 
it was moved out of the fort in the 1850s, uh, just to the north, a uh, few blocks. Uh, it was used as a residence, but then it was abandoned, as you can see here, and then moved back behind a Victorian house. Uh, this has actually has since been rehabilitated and is being used as a residence again, moved back out to the street front where it initially was when it was moved to the north part of Salt Lake City. You'll notice the log finish work on this is a little nicer. Uh, they've hewn the uh, sides of the logs to make them uh, smooth and square, and it uses a lap joint to hold those ends together. Uh, you typically don't see a lot of hewn log cabins because it took more effort to square off the logs. But for those who thought they're going to be living in the home for a while, they just they chose this type to uh, make it more presentable. Also made it easier to add wood siding to if they wanted to do that later. The lower uh, photo in this slide shows a rounded log cabin. Although these logs have been hewn to somewhat um, remove the bark and so forth and to smooth out the faces, but they're still mostly log uh, or a round log construction with notched joints on the end holding it together. Uh, this one is a little bit of a later constructed cabin. That chimney uh, looks like fired brick from the 20th century. Could have been a replacement chimney though. But you'll notice both of these have that single door and single uh, window layout that I talked about. Here's another log cabin. This one is actually located down in San P County in the town of Wales. Again, a very simple single door and single window layout, although the window is actually hidden uh, behind some lumber there. You can't see it. Um, again, this one was quickly put together with round logs and quick notching on the sides. That's a little bit of a, a utilitarian uh, addition on the side there. Um, round, round logs. Uh, this one, however, is uh, points to probably a Scandinavian construction or Eastern European because the, the logs are spaced a little bit on this rather than uh, notched and fitted together um, top to bottom. There's chinking in between each of the, the logs, and that could either be comprised of stone, small stones, uh, mud, or pieces of wood and bark. And here's one more. Um, this is a hewn log again. The, the logs are squared off, and it has a V-notched uh, pattern to the joinery on it. Uh, this one's in Spring City. Um, Scandinavian influence because of how the logs are fitted close together and the gables are infilled with wood siding. It's hard to see in the shadow up there, but it was only log up to the square and then the gable end was filled in with, with the wood siding to give it a more finished appearance. Uh, the overlap of the gable and the, the eaves on this suggests this roof may have uh, been added uh, later to an existing structure. I like their use of doors to cover up the windows there. Interesting use of doors rather than shutters. Here's a really nice example of a single cell house uh, moving away from log, although this one could potentially be a log cabin underneath that wood siding. But this one's in uh, Mount Pleasant. Uh, notice this one is actually a window door window pattern on the front, uh, suggesting that it could almost be a a hall parlor type house, but we know uh, from our research that this one uh, has a single room on the main floor. Uh, that is with the exception of the rear lean-to that was added later, and then the finished space above in the attic. Uh, again, very nice Victorian trim on the porch there, and um, nice uh, what we call drop siding, or um, the, where the siding is flat, but then has a bead in it sometimes um, called novelty siding. So this is a very uh, nice stone example of a, a single cell house. And this one it harkens back more to a square floor plan, a very small living space, especially when you consider the size of the stones uh, and the thickness of the walls. So even though it might look somewhat large on the outside, the inside, is quite a bit smaller because those walls are probably at least a foot and a half thick. The 
the owners of this or the builders of this took great pride in this house. You can tell because the stonework on this is very nice. Rather than using what we'd call random rubble, where they're just filled stones or partially fashioned stones, they took the care in um, sizing up each of these, making square sides uh, for each of the stones. So they laid together in a coarse ashlar found um, a type of, of masonry. That is, all of the courses are even and the same width all the way up. So they intended for this house to stand for a long time. Um, this one, again, is just a single door window pattern. You can see a little notch in the roof up there where the chimney once stood, but has since fallen in. Uh, I don't think this house even stands anymore. It's south of Spring City in the area known as Pigeon Hollow. And this photo was taken back in the 1970s or early 1980s. And I think this is now more or less just a ruin with partial walls standing on it. So I found this one, a, a tax photo of this one. This is the Edward Fowles house in Mount Pleasant. This is a very nice example of a single cell home. Um, you can see the top floor of this is higher than the other ones that have a um, attic window in them. This is almost a full two stories. It's what we call a story and a half. And that is where the windows project up into the gable. And so this one has a nice cross gable on the front of it. <clears throat> um, this one again is a window door window pattern with a uh, drop siding. And I found that this house is still standing. Uh, the photo is from Google Street View from around 2015. At that time, it looks like they were busy adding an addition or a carport to the side of this house. And you can see that it's also been stuccoed since then. But um, this has almost a full bedroom space on top rather than uh, just an attic space. And that attic space was used uh, typically for the kids or maybe the whole family to sleep in, as well as for storage. So here are a couple of interesting brick examples. Again, as most of these slides are, these are uh, located in Sampe County, the top one in Spring City. And this is from a tax photo from the 1930s, but this house was built in the early part of the 20th century, around 1906. And you can see there's some nice brickwork on this. If you look closely, you'll see the segmental uh, arched um, hood moldings over the door and window on the front. What I like about this is it shows an actual staircase leading up to that attic space door. And this made it much easier to get up there. Uh, you can see that an exterior staircase um, was almost essential in these to have enough interior room for the house to be functional. Uh, you can see how much room an interior a staircase could take, thereby um, creating much less room for the, the house to be used in multiple ways. Um, this one had a lean-to addition on it, and actually the addition was probably built at the same time as the house. Uh, the bottom one is a uh, window door window layout. This one was in Fairview. I think this one is now demolished. It's been there as long as I can remember, and I've been traveling down there almost my whole life because I have family from uh, San P. County. And I remember always passing by this house. Uh, again, the owner's uh, probably planned on staying here for a long time because they put a lot of effort into making a presentable uh, facade on this with those segmental arches with the um, decorative uh, Victorian style hood moldings made out of brick. You'll see that the addition on the back of this projects out to the side as well. That may have held a, a, stair, a staircase, but most likely a kitchen. Um, again, this one is uh, gone now. Um, it's, it's unfortunate because this is a very handsome house. I'm ending today on a wider example of a door window door layout. And this one could be mistaken for a hall parlor house just because of the width of it. Uh, this is the James Metcalf house down in Gunnison, again, in San Pete County. And you notice the nice, um, oolitic limestone, uh, masonry on this house. Unlike the previous stone house I showed you, this one is more random ashlar in that the stones are all of various sizes, although more or less they follow um, similar coursing across the, the house rather than what we call random rubble, where it's just a multiple 
variety of stones in different shapes and sizes. As you can see, this one's actually been restored. It was listed in the National Register of Historic Places about 20 years ago. And at that time, the owners uh, did a careful uh, rehabilitation project. It, it had been abandoned prior to that. Um, they did a very nice job of keeping it. So there we have the single cell house in all its variety of uh, forms and appearances and um, construction materials in Utah. I hope you've learned something today, and uh, next time we'll move on to cover the next extension of the uh, the single cell house, and that is the double cell house. So until then, we'll see you later.